Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the Rising Superstream, where the volume's really loud because I never check it. How you guys doing this evening? Oh god, my green screen. Everything's wrong because I never check it. <laughs> How you guys doing this evening? Uh, tonight, I'm planning to play Punchline, and nothing you can say or do will make me not play Punchline. Um, Okay, so I'm looking at punchline right now. I'm looking at the text punchline in the logo. There's a little space between punch and line. If you look at the Twitch video, it's punch space line. If you look at the YouTube title, it's punch space line. But then you look at the the PS like the, the, the PS4 UI text, and it's punchline with no space. And this is an issue because I made the thumbnail for punchline before streaming this, and then I Googled it and I realized there was a space and that I would have to redo the thumbnail and now the fucking system is telling me there's no space when that's wrong too. There's no consistency here. This is an absolute disaster from square one. Oh, wow. I'm glad we know exactly what we're getting into. Seventh chord, Christ. That's a logo I haven't seen in a while. Cute, it's a cute title screen. Give me one second real quick. Okay, sorry about that. So uh, before I get started, uh, big shout outs to P-Cube for providing a review key for this game. Uh, I super appreciate it. This is, of course, a little delayed. The game came out, I think, two weeks ago now. Uh, it's out on PS4 and Vita uh, in North America, and it's been out in Europe for an extra month, actually. Oh shit, it's gonna play an opening. Can't wait for the copyright strike on this. So, uh, Punchline is a visual novel puzzle game uh, based on an anime that came out a year before it in Japan. So the anime came out, and it had kind of a neat ending, but some people felt it was unsatisfying, and I can't disagree with that, um, because it felt like there was more. It felt like it was one arc, you know? It felt like one um, uh, da, 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 one ending in a visual novel, if you will. And then shortly after the anime ended, they announced that there was going to be a visual novel game, which was like, oh, I see. I, I now understand why that felt like one ending, because it probably is exactly that. Um, so this game supposedly fleshes it out dramatically and adds in, like, a true ending and stuff like that. Uh, I heard from some people back when it came out in Japan that this is, like, it's really good in its complete form now. Not that the anime was bad, because it was good, but it's even better now, so. Uh, so the scenario writer for this uh, was Kotaro Uchikoshi who, of course, uh, you probably know him best for the Zero Escape series. Um, Zero Escape wasn't a big hit in Japan at all. Like, not at all. So this is his first work after that, and this was more popular in Japan than Zero Escape was. Um, not that, you know, this is like Moe shit for sure, but like, the, writing's fo the writing is good and the characters are fun and stuff, so... It's a shame, poor Zero Escape wasn't popular in Japan. Actually, it was really quite unpopular in Japan. Uh, that was actually part of the reason that they had a tough time getting the third game going, if I remember correctly, uh, was like, Spike was like, yeah, we're not, like nobody cares about it here, really. I mean, some people do, but eh. <laughs> eh, not really. Actually, the second game sold really badly. Even launching on Vita and 3DS at the same time, it, it yeah, was not, was not a big success at all, was not a success in any way. Let's bump that text speed up to fast. I don't like instant. Sync text to audio. Wow, how does that work? How does that work? I wonder. That's interesting. Okay, cool. Uh, good. Great settings. Um, so the title, punchline, as in the punchline to a joke, but if you read the Japanese title, Panchirainu, is how you'd pronounce it, that also means panty line. That's also like the English panty line. Um, smart. <laughs> smart title. <laughs> 
Oh wow, it just jumps right in. Let's go. Oh yeah, so I have seen the anime. I'm going to try not to touch spoilers, so. I'm gonna take a second to look for the auto button. Did I just get it first try? No, that is just fast forward. No, okay, don't want that. Fucking hate this part of visual novels where you're like, which button's which? Where do people go when they die? They say their souls leave their bodies and stay where they died for a while. Look at the background here, that's great. And someone comes to get them and they go through a dark tunnel before they see a pretty field of flowers. Is that heaven? Square? Is this auto? Yeah, there we go, we found the auto button. Amazing. Yeah, so this game does use 3D models for the majority of the game, but for, I mean, a lot of the storytelling, as you can see, they're just using anime, which is cool. It's really just a circle of life. I'm surprised they're opening on this. If I remember right, the anime opens on, yeah, this scene. I'm pretty sure this is where the anime actually opens, and you don't see that kid stuff until later. Wow, I really like that they're actually using anime footage too, not just stills. I love Strange Juice's outfit. God, like, tonally, you can't go further than zero escape than this, almost. Yo, free sound effects are perfectly good. Everything can sound like metal hitting metal, don't even worry about it. <laughs>
I've never driven over spike strips, thanks God, thank God. But it like really scares me a lot for some reason. Like I would really hate to be in a car where that happens. Cause don't you just fucking like die <laughs> if you're going too fast? Your car just flips. <laughs> I don't know how it works, but I don't want it to happen to me. <laughs> Yeah, those poles too that pop out of the street that you use in watchdogs to fucking murder people. Yes, this is an important plot point. That fucking Japanese anime secret whisper. <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> oh man, this jumps around. The kid thing, I think, is, like, not revealed until, like, halfway through the show or something like that. So... But, like, you can already kind of start piecing it together, like, ten minutes in, in the game. Just a little. Fuck, was it only the last two episodes of the show? Really? Damn. Interesting. I hear the game goes a lot, like, a lot further. Like, almost twice as far, apparently. So... There'll be more stuff. Okay, we're gonna replay the opening, so I'm gonna skip. Oh. <laughs> okay, you can't skip the opening. Joke's on us for watching it in the first place. So the vast majority of the story takes place in this building that we have not yet gotten to. Um, but it's a, uh, I don't know, what do, you, what do you call these things? A condo building, I guess? It's not condos, they're renting. Whatever, it's this cool building. Only women are allowed to live there. It's safe, and it's nice, and every room looks great. <laughs> a dorm- well, it's not a dorm- a complex! Yes, thank you, that's the, the word I'm looking for, an apartment complex. This is considerably more respectable than high school DXD, but, uh... <laughs> yeah! It is better than that. You know, the, like, yes, it's crammed with fan service from start to finish. Um, however, it does have a genuinely well-written and interesting story. And I don't, I don't think you often get both of those. So, I'm, I was actually quite a, a fan of the anime. I liked it a lot. So, I've been pretty excited to play the game to see, like, 
how much better it gets, since apparently it does, so... <laughs> Everything is more respectable than High School DxD, yeah. Yeah, I only saw the first episode of that, and I was like, yep, nope, don't need to see that. That's, uh, fuck that show. <laughs> Yeah, High School of the Dead is pretty rad slash terrible. It's kind of both. So yeah, I think most everything will be 3D from here on out, except probably stuff that the anime already covered. I doubt they added new stuff. I doubt they added new, like, anime stuff, that is to say. Yeah, look, it's Jibanyan. Give me Yokai watch. Yeah, I'm excited for Yokai Watch 4, but I'm also excited for 3, which is coming out in January, I think. But I need to finish 2. 2 is so much closer gameplay wise to the first game than I expected it to be that I, I was having a hard time getting through 2 since I literally finished the first game and started 2 the very next day. Uh, they're really similar. Really slowing me down. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna stream Assault Spy at some point, probably. Not totally sure when, probably next week, since Thanksgiving's this weekend, but... I like that they're liberally using anime scenes. That's cool. Oh, fuck yeah, I forgot about the whole stole the body plot. Mmm. There's a lot, like, and like any Uchikoshi thing, there's a lot going on. And that was an important thing, is the body's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit, cool. Oh shit, but all of a sudden I actually remember where the body is. And it is really cool. <laughs> I don't think I don't think we'll get that far today, but For a little while I wasn't sure this game like was going to come out in North America and I'm really glad it did. Because just getting into it again is reminding me how much I really liked Punchline when it was playing. Yeah, actually using Nico Nico. That was in the anime as well.
バスを占拠した犯行グループへの取り調べは現在も引き続き行われています今回の犯行の動機について容疑者たちはバスを乗っ取れば世間の注目を集められると思った報道機関を通じて政府が認定している事実について広く一般に知らしめることが God, what was their gimmick again? The criminals, I can't fucking remember. But it was something goofy. わけのわからないことだらけで頭が破裂してしまいそうだったもっとも今の俺に頭という器官があれば話したけど俺はあの河原で横たわった自分自身の体を目撃し意識を失ったその後のことは何もわからない no, this is super not a full LP, guys. <laughs> Don't get pumped for that. Is this one of those dang isekais? Super no, actually. はい、そうですかとすぐさま納得できるはずがなかった。だがその一方で、こんなにもぶっ飛んだ状況を素直に受け入れてる自分もいた。初めてでは、なかった。I can't, I can't commit to that, guys. <laughs> the missing and the world ends with you both come out next week, so. <laughs> The Mandala Gandala, is that what it's called? Nandara Gandara. Okay, yeah. It's seriously like. <laughs> it's just like his work in 999 and shit. But it's su like it's like they made he made everything intentionally goofy, and I think that's kind of neat. When you play through it, there's so many parallels in like his writing style, but just every possible plot point for this, he was like, I gotta make it silly somehow, and I'm really into that. It's really fun. Oh yeah, and like Chiranosuke's name, what was the auto button? There we go. Uh, Chiranosuke, so like uh, a, a person whose end, whose name ends in like Nosuke is like a very like, or like that's a very plain uh, end suffix for a name. Like I'm trying to think of an American or an English comparison. Uh... But I'm not, to be honest, I don't actually have a good example right now. But like, Nosuke is a very common or plain suffix to the end of a name. And the word Chira is like the onomatopoeia for like peeking at something or like in a manga when panties flip up or something like that. So Chira Nosuke is like, that's what that is. That's what it is. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not playing this on, on PC, I'm playing this on PS4, Arc V. So, it is out on Vita as well. If there's a PC version, I don't, I don't know the deets. So basically his name is Peeping Tom. That's one way to take it, yeah. <laughs> I 
はないのら貴様は幽体なのらから壁や天井を自由にすり抜けることができる Yeah, just do whatever それからもう一つ最後に忠告をくれぐれも二度続けて興奮しないよう二度続けてうんそうするとどうなるんだ人類が人類が滅亡してしまうのやはとにかくなんだらかんだらを探すのら貴様が肉体を取り戻せば何もかもが平穏無事に解決する In the anime, I think he immediately fails at that I like the title cards there. Okay, so yeah, we can go from room to room freely. And you can see which people are in which rooms. Neat. Okay. Let's, I guess let's just start in Chiranosuke's room just to like look around and get a grips with the controls. So I don't die immediately. Oh, I guess he has text for each room each uh, at each period in time. That's cool. Probably. ファンさんとした部屋。それもその Okay, so I'm going to pop into one of the girls' rooms now. Uh, I, before we pop into one of them, uh, I wanted to say that I actually really dug in the anime the design and layouts of the room. Uh, it really felt like whoever was tasked with designing the rooms was tasked with designing an extension of the character. I mean, obviously that's something people say about where people live, that is, it's an extension of, of their being or who they are. Um, but this show, I think, was really successful at making environments that like I bought into that were goofy and outlandish, but also perfect for the character. A lot of anime, you know, you look at characters' rooms and they look like regular old Japanese rooms. And certainly some of those trappings appear here. Uh, but when we pop into this room, I'm sure you'll see how this is unmistakably her room. <laughs> unmistakably. And they all look like this and they're all kind of, they're all kind of fun and super customized to the, uh, to the person. It's really dope. There's a really controlled amount of environments in this game, so I, you know, I'm glad that they really went all out getting them right. I think I remember what we're looking for here. We will ghost trick around the room and help her figure it out. やっぱりダメか。俺の姿は見えないらしい。おまけに声も聞こえないようだ。ある程度予想していたことではあったが、こうして目の前に現実を突きつけられると改めて愕然とせずにはいられなかった。早く何とかしないと。if she's not looking for her auto blow, how could you misplace an auto blow? They're like as big as a washing machine. Oh, okay, so I guess first it wants you to head to each of the rooms. I see they're getting grayed out as I visit them. I guess before we get into the investigation scenes. Because I do know those exist, so... Is this Geist on the GameCube? Yes. That's exactly what this is. I 
おそらく高校生ぐらいだとは思うのだが学校には行っていないようだいつもこの部屋で何か機械類をいじったり研究らしきことをしている今も何かを作っているようだが僕はインベンター君はインバイトハー君はインベーター Oh yeah, she like raps to herself <laughs> I totally forgot about that. Yeah, I agree. The textures on the hair are really good on the 3D models. I remember eyeballing them in the screenshots and being like, shit, good ass work, texture artists. Next time the hair pops up, take a look. There's、um, a lot of like baked lighting on it. Like fake anime lighting, you know? Like how it's like shining on their hair right there. They have that baked in, it looks really good. Right out the fucking window. <laughs> I like that. The statue is important. The statue of the person, it's super important. <laughs> I don't remember where Ito is at this point. Like, why she's not home? I don't quite remember what that is. All these Amazon packages. She has like 40 copies of FPS magazine on her shelf. Okay, yeah, she's asleep. Right, right, right. I was gonna say, I thought she was still in here. I also have a subscription to FPS magazine. Get the latest tips and tricks for singularity and fracture. Fracture. When do we punch people in this game? Yo, it already happened. <laughs> it happened on the bus. I wonder if she'll like appear in the game. She didn't get much in the anime, if I remember. As in, I think she got like fucking nothing. じっちゃんそのじっちゃんもすでに高いし今俺にとって身内と呼べるのは悲しいかな変態の姉だけしかとにかくそんなわけで
この部屋にある家具や電化製品の類は全て姉貴のお下がりだ机も布団もテレビもパソコンももちろんだからといって見知らぬ何者かに部屋をあさられてもいいということにはならない一刻も早く何だあらがんだあらを見つけ出し肉体を取り戻さなければ。Yeah, feel free to take a gander now at the hair I was talking about with the beautiful textures. Seriously, they look fantastic. The character models in general look pretty great. Chiranosuke looks a little odd, but like the, the rest of them look really good. Bearing in mind this was supposed to run on a Vita, which, well, it does run on a Vita. I kind of wish in the PS4 version they had like gone a bit more crazy with anti aliasing because there's like a bit of shimmer, but whatever. It looks good. Keep pulling, just keep tugging. Okay, now I think we're getting to the ghost chicken. Christ, are we not going to get to Ghost Trick yet? Yeah, okay. We must be getting there. When are they going to make a sequel to Ghost Trick? Oh, it's perfect the way it is. I mean, never, but it's perfect the way it is. Has anyone else played Avenging Spirit? Yes, I have. That is a good ass Game Boy game. Jellico was so on fire with their Game Boy games. All their shit was good. All these explanations and stuff, more or less, were in the show too. Much more abridged, obviously. But it felt very video gamey, even just from the first episode. And here we are. Okay, 
鉄神見習いクラスのひよっこに過ぎなんなのそのレベルで鍵を移動させるなど勝負だけど俺にも力はあるって確かに力はあるでもその力はまだまだ微弱なものに過ぎないのだよつまり鍵を動かすには霊力レベルを上げる必要があるとその通りどうすればレベルアップできるうんその前に一つ質問幽霊はなんで人間を怖がらせると思う<laughs> like this ghost they illustrated. <laughs> Is that a Moomin, Christ? <laughs> Is Moomin popular? Is that a thing? I saw Moomin stuff at, uh... I don't remember what store. A store in Montreal recently. And I was like, really? Who wants this brand? I don't like Moomin. <laughs> Not a fan. Much more of a Peppa Pig or a Miffy kind of guy. Like, what country is Moomin popular in? Like, China? Are they the Smurfs of China? From Sweden. Damn, okay. Yeah, even this was in the anime too. Oh my god, it's true. The leveling up was even portrayed in the anime. Fuck. I kind of forgot about that up until just now. But you're right. You guys are super right in the chat. Or Hisaniko, anyway. That did happen. In Norway, when you donate blood, you get a Moomin cup? Really? Damn. Clearly underestimating those weird animal things. Okay, uh, you can look at the soul fragment gauge in the bottom left to see how many soul fragments you've got. Once it gets full, your spirit power level will increase. Your rank will go up as well, allowing you to move the heart-shaped key. Okay, cool. Just try not to die. Try not to die for the whole world. Right, okay. So I gotta conserve my uses as well. Okay, so you do your ghost tricks by just using the cursor on those things. Okay, cool. Okay. We're so close to playing, guys. 
So close. <laughs> I promise there's gameplay. Okay, so L1 and R1 like literally move you to different cameras around. Okay, so let's start by just doing some basic shit. <laughs> yeah, okay, I just interacted with it. Soon we'll get to play. It's coming. Yeah, the anime used uh, CG for the rooms as well. I'm not sure that it's the same models, but uh, they did have cool 3D rooms. They looked good. Some people, I remember a lot of people criticized the anime for that, but I thought it looked good. Some people just hate CG in, like, anime. So. There we go. She's gonna be real fucked up after that one. Yeah, we deserved those two trophies. Totally. Excuse me. Oh yeah, I love the show Tesagure. Yeah, I've seen it all, I really like it. Go watch Tika Tisagure if you haven't seen it. It's really worth it. <laughs> it's the roughest CG, but hey. Okay, let's keep destroying her psyche. We gotta do stuff with more impact. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Okay, how do I cave in the ceiling? Clearly that's the answer here. Okay, I only have one use left, so I imagine it's reserved for something specific at this early juncture. Oh yeah, and on the left of the screen, the boom gauge. Mercifully empty right now. Okay, there must be something really loud around that I can take advantage of. Oh, yeah. 
Let's knock those plushies down. You know what? That's perfect. Yeah, there's like 50 trophies in this game, Hasaniko. It's like a full trophy list. There you go. 50 trophies. On the dot. You know, I don't really dig this, the, the cleanup in progress thing there. I guess after every time you move something, they, they want to reset everything in the scene. But it's a, little, it's a little jarring the way they do it with the little Chernosuke drinking and stuff. But hey, I guess it's not really it's not super important. It's not really the main part of the game anyway, so eh. One of those little things. We got four trophies for this, this series of events where we barely did anything. Recently I was playing uh, uh, Root Double on the Vita, and it hands you like seven, it's a visual novel as well, it hands you like seven trophies within the first like ten minutes for doing nothing. Yeah, let's do it. Those are the four main characters, by the way. So, <laughs> <laughs> Chernoski's like, good fucking luck with that, loser. <laughs> That's never gonna happen. Yo, you can't slide it under the door. What type of house or building would have like a gap under a door? That's super insecure. That's how you get bugs. <laughs> Give you one guess as to who she was referring to there. He's important. ラブだ。職業は霊媒師。彼女は俺の姉。入り立つ秋名の親友でもある。二人はニコニコ生放送。いわゆるニコ生を通じて知り合ったらしい。ラブだと俺の姉は共に生主だったようなのだ。俺の
If you're thinking that this dude's 3D model isn't great, by the way, the, the mannequin, it, he also is illustrated just as, as terribly slash perfectly in the anime. He has this great blocky face. It's really charming. You can tell whoever designed it really took a second to think about how to make it as, as like, shit-looking as possible. <laughs><笑> Yeah, that's why she was streaming on the bus earlier, exactly. <笑>私生活を こんなにガチガチに固まっちゃって。かわいい。とにかくこれでコマは一つ増えたのよ。ミカタ、メイク、それからこのラブラ。3人にうまくいたずらを仕掛けてミカタもメイカの部屋に導くのだ。No, she'll literally never stop. That's her deal. She loves him. <laughs> Got some Sans Undertale merch up on her dresser. Yeah, this is the same guy who wrote the Zero Escape games, but like the aesthetic of the Zero Escape games was death, and the aesthetic of this game is like fan service, but like goofy fan service almost. It's interesting. Because it's not, it's not as brazen as something like Saikon no Quasar or indeed like high school DXD or anything like that. There's a, like there's a certain thoughtfulness to it, but it's I mean not to say it's high prose or anything because it's but sometimes it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's 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 a peculiar mix. It's the Evangelion of fan service. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Gershon puts it well. It's self-aware. Yeah. That, that's uh, maybe a good way of describing it. Craig T. bravely says he liked Seikon no Quasar as a kid. Brave. As a kid, I liked Arthur. You know, I actually remember this song from the anime. So I guess they're using a bunch of the same music too, probably. Look away immediately. That's part of like the, the, the thing I find self-aware is like, they built in how it's like a negative to see panties. It's, it's, it's... Nifty. <laughs> right through the wall. 
Yeah, this is what I was talking about earlier, where he just fails immediately. Yeah, Art Florpheus says, uh, okay, there is self-aware, but I'm not sure that it really holds up to scrutiny, you know. Feels a little like having your cake and eating it, too. I, I, I strongly agree, actually. Like, I don't think that, you know, it makes it... Like, fan service is, like, kind of inherently, like, sexist and shit, and I don't think that hand waves it or anything. I guess I'm just kind of into this because the context of it is more interesting than most shows where they're they're trying to tell some story and then it just flip-flops to hey sex and then hey story and this one kind of weaves it in and has kind of a a, a really intricate and neat and good plot so like i i feel the same way about kill a kill kind of as well where like not hand waving that it's just you know excuses to get these girls mostly nude but like there was there was some neat writing surrounding it too um i think that's kind of fun so i don't know you know it's a nuanced discussion for sure would darling and the franks count on this too i don't think darling and the franks like i've seen it i don't think it has as much fan service i like i think i think that one's fine they don't really have much fan service there's a beach episode right i think there's a few it's more like darling and the franks is one of those shows that just like decides like hey have some fan service here there everywhere Actually, not everywhere. Here and there. And that, that kind of sucks, because it's like, ah, can't you just play it straight? No, we gotta gotta get some fan service in there. Gotta make sure people don't change the channel. Um, but it's not as bad as, like, this, right? If I remember right. Oh yeah, there was the whole, the way they sit in the mechs, which was, yeah, that was stupid. <laughs> it's a, you know, it's a neat, it's a neat metaphor, and I mean, it's, it's so plain as day what they were going for and what they're saying, but it just never lands. So, I don't think they really nailed it. Yeah, I, I forgot about the way they piloted the mechs, it's true. Yeah. Other, because I was going to say, other than the way they pilot the mechs, I think the fan service is just occasional. Um, there was another show that I I didn't love, uh, but the thing that bummed me out about it the most was the fan service. It was Kiznaiver. Uh, I remember the very first episode. The show goes like 23 minutes with like no fan service, and then suddenly at the end it's just like bam, I'm gonna slam you with that fan service because we couldn't just do it. We couldn't do a whole show without any fan service. And it's super occasional in that show. And it's like, why do you need to do this? Every show's got fan service. Can we not have a few that just don't? I don't know. Feel free to watch Kiznaver. It's still a fun show. I don't love it. My, my, my girlfriend actually liked it more than I did. Um, but I, I know the reception was sort of mixed. But it's cool anyway. So, Kiznaver has some really goofy fun shit too in it. There's this one scene I'll never forget where... Uh, this one it's like a super quick cut it's nothing important but this one character picks up another character and like picks him up above his head and runs him into the sea and throws him and i have a gif of it 
uh, on my phone and I look at it constantly and it makes me laugh every time. <laughs> I thought Franks was just kissing Ivor with the fan service turned up. Uh, if only it could be that decent. There was some stuff I liked in Darling in the Franks. Like the past stuff with like when Zero Two was a baby and uh, the like interpersonal drama and relationships that kind of happened partway through the series. But like, wasn't really into the mech stuff. And the very end, the ending, and what happens with Zero Two and shit didn't really, didn't really do it for me, so. But there was good stuff in there. I really like some of the ideas too. How uh, the one girl gets like really intrigued by the idea of like having a kid and being pregnant and stuff, like. There's a lot of concepts that they kind of like tiptoe up to, but they really don't fully explore at all. And I think that was really tragic. Um, I was surprised in a show that was so explicitly about like, you know, guys and girls kind of metaphorically doing it to run these mechs that like homosexuality was barely touched upon. There was this one girl who it was it became clear that she was gay and there was basically no option for her like and that sucked uh, you know uh, I found it weird and I mean it's it's Japan right there's there's still really really bad with um, gay rights and such and that you know that sucks I wish that was touched on more <laughs> Prime Minister Abe here did someone say pregnancy <laughs> <laughs> right? Something something Shinzo Abe. Yeah, you guys. <laughs> yeah, they do demonstrate you can pilot with same sexes and that that's kind of what disappointed me about that. Again, it was just another like I, like the show I, it is clearly about you know sexuality and growing into sexuality and stuff and it it like barely tiptoes into any of the interesting topics it just kind of goes like yep that exists on we go and it's like come on like <laughs> do some interesting shit <laughs> Oh yeah, it's true. The 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 two female characters could only do it because they were clones of Klaxosaurus. Sort of. Right, forgot that. It's true. Yeah, I mean, I I wonder why that is. Like, you know, whether that was just like never the vision for the show or you know if they never saw like sat down and thought about like should we explore these other topics because it was just never you know never their main vision you know was it was there i don't think there was intent and they went like we should explicitly not explore these topics for you know reasons but it just it kind of just feels callous a little bit so i don't know still like a fun show, but I, I don't think it's like great or anything. Controversial statement, Darling in the Franks isn't great. <laughs> right? Okay. Let's pop into Rabra's room. Yeah, I'm also interested to see Promare, because that's, that's the one we should be paying attention to. Like, Trigger's cool and all, but, like, Imaishi is the guy there who matters super hard. <laughs> That's shitty of me to say. There's so many talented workers there, but Imaishi is the dude.
Yeah, I've seen people blame Trigger for Franks, and like, regardless of the fact that like it wasn't Trigger's anime in the first place, like they animated it, but it was A1's show, like, nobody should blame anyone for media, like, like yeah, middling stuff comes out, like whatever, we don't need to sh just like shit on everyone. <laughs> You know, is it not enough to say, like, eh, it wasn't that good a show? I, I hate the, like, internet idea of, like, who who made it bad? Let's figure out who made it bad. Make sure they know that they're the reason. That's so childish. Oh, shit, shit. <laughs> okay, so look, the gauge just filled up, and now I, yeah, now it's ticking back down a little bit. Let's start by knocking this off, see how that goes. Like, I think the worst thing about Franks as well is like, it's not, it's not abysmal. It's really not. It's fine. At worst, it's bad. I don't think it's, like, even close to, like, worst anime or anything like that, you know? And that's kind of what kills me about it, you know? About the way people received it. It's like, it's it's fine. Shit's allowed to just be fine. Okay, yeah, I think right now we pretty much gotta switch over. Got any favorite Japanese dramas? Uh, 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 Densha Otoko. I can't remember if I liked the Korean or the Japanese version, though. So. Have I ever watched Mashal Master of Martial Hearts? I have not. I don't know why I can't read right now. I watched two episodes of, um, what was the show that aired last season? Something something Ragnarok? Master of Ragnarok? The, 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 the isekai where the kid calls his friend back in Tokyo every night or whatever. That show is terrible. <laughs> That's a terrible show. <laughs> Darling in the Franks is a fucking god masterpiece compared to that. <laughs> Master of Ragnarok and Ein Jar, that's it, thank you. What a title. Oh, I liked Erased running and gunning. I thought it was really good. My girlfriend loves Erased. It's one of her big favorites. The manga is a bit, a bit better though, it's more thorough, I guess, but the anime adaptation is really good. The live action is a fucking farce. <laughs> it's super worth watching. I love when like anime or, or manga or, or games or whatever get live action adaptations that are abysmal or just, or maybe not even abysmal, but completely like wrong. Like the uh, Resident Evil live action movies, I love watching those things. They're so wrong. They just get it all wrong, and it's kind of fun.
Yeah, I didn't like Interview with Monster Girls very much. I actually, I bought the manga, the first volume, like, before the anime came out. And I, I was like, yeah, this is just not... This is just nothing. Handshakers live watch win. Man, Handshakers is, like, trying so many interesting visual effect ideas simultaneously and landing none of them in every shot. It's baffling. There are so many cool ideas for visuals in Handshakers, and in some scenes you can almost see stuff come together, but it never does. I may be wasting my my uses here actually, I might be doing this wrong. I like how it kind of like attracts you in. It's good, yeah, yeah, I think I'm doing this wrong. I think I should have went straight to Mika's room and done important stuff there. Oh yeah, that, oh, that she's working on there? I forgot about that. Have I been playing Torna? Uh, yeah. I haven't played it much uh, this past week. But I have been. It's really good. It's so much tighter than Xenoblade 2. And I dig that. Okay, so I can move the key, but I don't think that'll do anything useful here. Ah, power off. That's good. It's a good one. Hey, Bread Assassin. Uh, I, I'd say this is... So far, this has been good. It, it's definitely really well made, and if it's... If it, you know, is as good as the anime, which, I mean, it looks like it is, then it should be a really good time by the end. Diver is such an awkward shit. I love her. Yeah, like she talks big, but she ain't shit. She's great. Okay, 
Oh yeah, get fucked. They're all super inconvenienced. That's exactly it. <laughs> you nailed it. Just inconvenience everyone slightly. Hey, shout outs to that plushie on uh, Mikatan's bed. Right up there. That's just lying across the bed. The little pink kappa. It's super cute. I love how lazy it is with his big belly button. That's good shit. Get me one of them. Yeah, the dynamite alarm clock on the top is cool too, it's true. I didn't really notice that that was hooked up to the alarm clock. <laughs> That's fun. Be hooked up, it might just be the other arm of the alarm clock, but either way, it's cute. <coughs> just keep a fake stick of dynamite in your room. Fake. Oh yeah, I've ruined her life. Here we go. <laughs> She's such a mess. There is a text scroll speed setting. Uh, right now, it's actually toggled to a thing. So it's uh, the text speed is tailored to the amount of dialogue left. Which is a bit weird sometimes, sometimes it's a little slow, sometimes it's a little fast. But basically the text box, like the text will scroll shortly, or the text will end scrolling shortly before the dialogue ends. With that one setting we have on. But th there was a, uh, a faster text scroll setting that we didn't do. There was like an instant one. But even just toggling off the uh, the one that syncs the length of the, the, the text scroll to the length of the line, that would probably make it fine. So. Yeah, after all this, you better have the right key. <laughs> Not doing that again. Oh fuck, I just made a new save. Shit. 
gonna have to delete the other one. <laughs> Rotating saves is for cowards. Oh, I can't delete from here. Oh, well, that's fine. Oh, uh, this was one of the, um, both of these, actually, were, uh, what are they called in anime and in shows? The bumpers, where they appear before and after the commercials. That's neat that they're using the bumpers here. Didn't expect that. I've seen people call them eye catches before, but aren't they? Isn't bumpers like the proper? I don't know. I don't know it's fine. It doesn't matter. It's it probably both are fine. Uh, <laughs> this is not a hill I care to die on or even walk up. Yeah, One Piece had great bumpers. Row, row, fight the power. That's what they said in One Piece. <laughs> As they rode their boat. <laughs> I have no idea what the One Piece bumpers were. <laughs> Remember that time in One Piece where they rode the Going Merry? Every time they went anywhere, they rode? And Nami said, wow, I hate rowing this boat? ね、ごめん。ごめん。ごめん。ごめん。ごめん。ごめん。ごめん。ごめん。ごめん。ごめん。ごめん。ごめん。ごめん。ごめん。ごめん。ごめん。ごめん。ごめん。ごめん。ご
溶いただけの味噌汁と同じよなのに恋ができないなんてかわいそうハツガツオは春にしか食べられないのよファンのためですそれは建て前本当はしたいんでしょ恋それとももうしてとか Wow, Yoko Littner confirmed same age as Kyrie in Kingdom Hearts 1. Are you fucking serious? Kyrie in Kingdom Hearts 1 was 14? I wouldn't have guessed. I would have thought they were younger. Damn, son. Because I knew Yoko was 14, but I don't know Kyrie. Jeez. Then you put him next, you put him next to um, Josuke, who's like a firm... I mean, I think he's actually 17, right? But let's just say he's 14 for the sake of argument. <laughs> Puberty really hit Josuke hard. Are these two kind of smash or nah? I'm gonna put that hard in the nah category. <laughs> Jonathan Joestar at the beginning of part one is like 12. Hot damn. He looks just like I did when I was 12. <laughs> it really went downhill from there. エンカナトリウムであれば何でも。要は気持ちの問題よ。これで足りるかな足りそう。私に関東1円の横島なれをまとめてしまってさせるつもり。クミちゃんからもらったんです。例の新潟のファンから送られてきたってやつね。はい。
配信に使ったのはいつもとは違う別のアカウント誰も知らないはずなんだけどなねえちょっと何なのよこれスマルさんのリンゴちゃんは蜜がいっぱい歌うのナブキノいくねおっとナブラあ,あれや亀岸君脱走しとったでなんですってナブラさん押しよう押しようありがとう<笑>はあ助かったところで亀岸君って誰あれ知らんかったラブラ、最近カメ買い始めたんやでそいつにつけた名前がカメニシ君そういうことあ、はあせやったなナルギのカメ苦手やったもんなえそんなこと言うてる場合ちゃう今のカラオケは緊急事態発生の合図ストレンジジュース出動やThis transformation sequence has such a good gag. I love it. Should you watch the show before playing the game?、Uh, I would say don't bother watching the show before playing the game. You can just play the game. Yeah, so if you didn't figure it out already. <laughs> Make you a fat costume. Yeah, we definitely haven't gotten to the brunt of the game bits, Yamikami, but there are many,、uh, supposedly many endings to this game, and you do need to figure out how to get them. So, up till now, it's been pretty static, though, that's for sure. Yeah, so Mika develops all this cool shit. And there's the secret room in the house that she, like, runs all this from. Are you finally gonna wake up? Yeah, here we go. I don't remember if the bear comes in yet, or if that's later.
恐竜を絶滅に導いたと言われている隕石の大きさは直径約1 0キロメートルもしもこの VR1 が地球に衝突した場合どれほど甚大な被害が発生するかは想像に難くないだろう What the fuck do I mean bear? <laughs> you heard me There's the Space Force. Look at these new visual novel ass backgrounds made for this game. Craig asks, uh, why is this dude in Japan complaining about American bomb shelters? Because he's trying to expose that there's, like, proper reason to be concerned and use bomb shelters and, and the world's covering it up. And also America's trying to nuke an asteroid. So. <clears throat> yeah, here we go. Oh my god, they're just teasing this character. Teasing her hard. There we go. Wow. 
米国政府並びに日本国政府は今すぐ VR1 に関する真の情報を開示せよこれが我々救命会からの要求であるただいま Man, this I believe is the ending. Yeah, this is the show's ending animation. Fuck, that's neat. I didn't realize this was presented in, in sort of episodes. That's kind of cool. Boy, that first episode sure is linear. Yeah, neat. Yeah, we, we finished the game. Full LP, confirmed, and done. Okay, it is a different song. Okay. Cool. Um, thank you. I'm glad I'm not crazy.